Hey, Inspired Community, welcome back. It has been a while since I have done a video solo. And there's a reason for that. And I wanted to share that with you guys today. I wanted to share um, a story about myself and what I've been navigating over the last six months. And I wanted to take some time today to let you into my world um, in a new way. I've been practicing a lot of open-heartedness, a lot of vulnerability, and I finally feel ready to share my story. Um, for those of you who are maybe new, and this is maybe the first video that you're seeing of me, I tend to teach through story. So I have lived experience and then I teach through that and um, I share the wisdom that I accrue across uh, my adventures. And yeah, so I want to kick it old school today. I, I used to create videos like this all the time and then I got into kind of being a bit more structured. And I think I want to get back to just creating through flow just through being in presence and just by sharing what comes through me in the moment and um, not being premeditated or prescribed. I think it's, uh, it's important. And um, so anyway, um, I'm glad to be back um, sharing. This is my Dharma. This is definitely my path. What I'm meant to be doing is living. Um, I get a lot of crazy experiences in my life. A lot of things happen and, um, you know, I, I, I'm, my dharma is to, to live this, to live this crazy life and then to share about it. And so when I'm not sharing, it's usually in the last six months, I've been really struggling and uh, I haven't wanted to be public. <clears throat> and it just, you know, it was, it was good though. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was very intentional self-isolation and, and um, avoidance of public, being in the public eye because I needed time. I needed time to really grieve and heal and go through the things that I've had to go through over the course of the last six months. And um, yeah, the title of this video is how to move through dark times in your life. And I actually got the title of this video because I started practicing sharing with my clients. Well, maybe I'll back it up. What the only things that I've been doing in my life is working with my clients private, private one-on-one. -on -one. I stopped doing workshops uh, because it was too much for me. And I record a one podcast a week on the Game and, the Game and Going Deeper podcast. That's pretty much it. And I did a little bit of work with Alyssa. Um, but the last two months I've backed out of that because I've just needed a lot of space. So the, the, the title of this video came from me sharing with a client. I won't mention his name, but um, he'll know who he is when he hears the story. And he asked me how I was doing and I was having a really dark day. I was having, I was experiencing a lot of depression and I've, that's what I've been feeling, just a lot of flatness. And he, he inquired, he wanted to know a bit more about what I was navigating and uh, we shared and the whole session was basically us just talking like humans and, and sharing struggle and things that we're going through. And, he said at the end of the session, this was probably the most helpful session I've ever had with any practitioner I've ever worked with. And that was a, a huge eye opener for me because I was like, wow, like this really is why we're here. We're here to connect. We're here to share human experience. And yes, I'm a practitioner. I, I'm a counselor. I do this work. So I have to maintain the fact that it's about them, <laughs> obviously. Um, but it really opened me up to the fact that he, well, he asked me, he's like, well, he's like, how are you moving through the darkness? How are you, how are you navigating it? He's like, I really want to know because he's like, I want to know how somebody like you would navigate this. And I shared, I shared how I'm navigating it. And so that, that, that's how the, the title of this video came. And I've been wanting to create one uh, about sharing my story and what I've been navigating, but it just hasn't felt right. So yesterday I woke up and I was like, you know, I, I want to, I, ha I just had the idea and I was like, I got to do it. And I wasn't ready yesterday. So then today I, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this today. And it feels good. I feel, I feel present. I feel very, it feels right. So I'm glad I'm, I'm here to share. Um, so, and I will, I will say this, I'm not going to edit this video after I'm going to take my time and I'm going to go slow and I'm probably going to have moments of pause where I just really feel 
right? I, this transformation has slowed me down tremendously. And um, for people that are in that hyper state and they're very busy, you know, feel free to go and, and put this on 1.25 speed and watch me watch me quicker. That's fine, but I'm going to take my time and I'm just going to be also sending transmission today through this video of the work I've done. It's coming through energetically. You'll feel, you know, the way my voice is softer and, and slower and the way that I'm handling myself is, is um, calmer and more grounded. So if you're wanting to make a transformation related to that, then stay with me, stay with me. Um, this is my third dark night of the soul and all of them have lasted longer than a year <laughs> and I'm hoping this one this is at six months now I'm hoping it doesn't go a year I don't feel like it will but and they're very tiring they're very exhausting and I know everybody that's watching this if you follow my work you're you're walking similar dharma to me like you're you're in this life you're living you're feeling you're you're doing this right <laughs> so you get it and these dark nights for me are very much characterized by the shedding of ego and the shedding of my attachments and the shedding of who i'm not so i can step into more of who i am right and this is like authenticity. That's why I do this work. Authenticity is shed away ego, which is who I am not, and move towards soul-centered energy, which is who I am, right? And when I'm in that energy, I'm in my power. And what I've realized over the course of the last six months is how I've been blocking my power. I've been blocking joy. I've been blocking love. I've been blocking vulnerability. I've been blocking a lot of things in my life and I chose to not do this anymore. And when I made that choice, I set an intention and then this is what happens, right? I go through this work. So the last six months ago, I set an intention that I wanted to open my heart. I wanted to start singing all of these things. And then now I'm going through this massive transformation so I can embody my intention. So everything is serving me. Everything's happening for me, not to me. And it, but you know, I have to, I have to ground myself in that wisdom constantly because it's so challenging as my ego is being, being, is shedding skin. I'm losing touch with who I am <laughs> and, and my attachments and the ego loves, my ego loves attachment. It loves certainty. It loves control. And as these things are, are, are shedding, it's so painful. And I have, I'm not, I'm in the, I'm in the in-between stage. So I'm not, I'm not fully in my power. I'm not fully seeing the, 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 the fruit of my labor. And it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm truly exhausted. And, um, It's, yeah, I would say probably this is, the, this is the most challenged, the most vulnerable, the most exposed, the most raw that I've ever felt in my life is right now. And, you know, my higher self is like, yeah, this is beautiful. Like, keep going. You're, you're getting to some really beautiful things here. And, and, you know, you can only from an open hearted place attract love, which is something I really want in my life. I want romantic love. I also want to feel more confident and secure giving and receiving love from, from people, just people, my family, my friends. And this is not something I'm good at. <laughs> I've had a major realization over the course of the last while that I am not good at letting people support me and i through through experiences from childhood i learned hyper independence and social isolation as, as strategies to cope um, i learned busyness as a strategy to cope and all of these things have been they've served me tremendously they've served me tremendously and i'm so grateful for them um, but they no longer serve me and they're actually holding me back from stepping into who I am, who I want to become, and 
Um, so I've had to really, I've had to really slow down. I've had to really open up. I've had to really practice humility and things are really shifting. So, you know, there was, there was resistance to sharing all this. I'm going to just take some, some tea, some lemon balm tea mixed with oat straw. So oat straw and lemon balm, beautiful tea for helping with the nervous system. Um, so definitely go get yourself some of that. It's very soothing. I drink it every day. Um, there's a lot of resistance to sharing my story because, well, there's a couple things that were coming up for me around, um, around sharing this and it's the big one. And I know a lot of people, whether you're a therapist, a coach, a counselor, a somatic worker, whatever you do, there's this notion and this pressure put on us that we have to have it all together. We have to have the answers. We have to be living a very pure and perfect life in order to be teaching this work. But this, this, that's a fallacy. And I bought hard into that one. And that's prevented me from really being able to be vulnerable. And, you know, I would do, I did this before where I would share a lot of, you know, really like what I'm struggling with. And then I kind of, for the last few years, I shut that off in me. And I was like, I, I, I can't be doing that. I can't be sharing my struggle as much because I should be further along than I am. That's the message I was telling myself. And I want to debunk this today because this is, this is a very dangerous belief to carry because I, it separates me from people. And I struggle, I struggle and I have mental health stuff. I've struggled with mental health stuff since I was a kid and um, I'm a spiritual warrior. I'm on a spiritual path and that is also very, very hard. It's hard to be conscious in this world. It's hard to be a truth seer in this world. Um, you know, I, I see and feel things that a lot of people don't and it's, painful there's a lot of suffering attached to seeing the world through through such clear eyes you know and sometimes I wish I could be ignorant and, and go back to the way things were when I was younger but you can't unsee what you've seen right and so that's where the resistance is today and I feel like even talking about it I don't actually feel any resistance I feel actually really happy right now that I'm able to just share this because I I do think that people need to hear it and I think it it's you know, through sharing what I'm navigating, it allows people to feel seen and feel heard and feel the humanity. Like we all share in this human predicament, <laughs> the predicament of being human, the, the duality, the soul and the ego and, and the dance that we are constantly doing between these two worlds. And, you know, I'm, I'm no exception to that. And, uh, it's very humbling and uh, yeah, I guess maybe where there was a bit of shame there before around, um, you know, I should, I'm teaching this stuff, so I should have it together. I should, I should have it. And no, that's, that's not, that's not the way this works. <laughs> and anybody that's presenting that image, I think is, is falsified. I think they're egoic. They're in their ego if they're presenting that they've that they're fixed, that they're healed to completion. I don't think it's possible. I think we're constantly navigating life and its challenges, um, and we're constantly being humbled by life's challenges. And I think humility is, is the antithesis of ego. Right? When we're humble, we were not. We can't be an ego. Those two energies can't exist in the same moment. So, and I'm trying to shed ego and I'm trying to move closer to more humble, human centered energy. And uh, I will say too, like the dark night of the soul, I don't know why it's even called that because first of all, it doesn't last for a night. <laughs> and second of all, it's not really happening to your soul. It's happening more to the ego. So it should be like the dark year of the ego where the ego sheds skin. And there's this notion in, in the spiritual community that, you know, to, to abolish the ego or to, you know, ego death and, and all these terms. And I, I don't believe that. I don't believe in that. I don't think it's possible. I think if we were to abolish the ego, we would be abolishing ourself, um, at least aspect of self, right? The psychological aspect of self would be abolished. We can't exist in this world without that, right? So maybe monks 
people that are existing in their own separate quarters where they don't have to engage in life and work and relationships and these sorts of things like sure maybe you can uh, you know have ego death but if you're if you're navigating this world in a relational way and a vocational way i think it's impossible and i think it's actually would be unhelpful to us if we if our ego died but what we want to do is we want to shed ego skin we want to shed the rigidity and the control and the righteousness and the conviction and these these aspects of ego that are are you know cause separation and disconnection and i think that's what i'm going through <laughs> You know, I, I, I experienced a significant amount of trauma in my in my life. And my ego had to develop very, very big, very, very strong in order to keep me safe. And I'm so thankful for that. Because if without that, without dissociation, without ego, you know, probably a premature ego formation, I wouldn't have survived. I really wouldn't have. Um, so I'm thankful to that. But it's it's caused enough havoc in my life now. It's it's ruined a lot of my relationships. And it's kept me in the lone wolf energy for far too long. And I'm learning now how to let go of control and let go of isolation and these things and start to move back into connection. And not just connection with others, connection with myself. Because when we dissociate, we disconnect from a part of ourself. We become fragmented. And when we come into connection with self again, it's like we're coming into connection with the heart with the soul, with the pain, the pain that we've had to be, endure in this life. And that's, you know, th this is like, honestly, my third bout, bout of trauma work. And I'm, I'm, I'm fucking exhausted, to be honest, folks. I'm fucking exhausted. And the first two times, I think I was cerebrally ne negotiating with my trauma. And now I'm actually somatically negotiating with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm connecting to it. And I'm, I've done a lot of deep inner child work and reparenting work. And it's helped me tremendously, but what's happening is all of my defense mechanisms have been stripped. <laughs> so my armor has been taken off and I'm still feeling like I'm in the trenches of, of you know, of the war <laughs> and I got no armor. So I'm constantly walking around terrified and I'm, and I, I'm terrified of people. I'm terrified of connecting. I'm terrified of being hurt. Um, I'm terrified of failure. I'm terrified of rejection. You know, and, and all of these things make become magnified because I'm no longer using my ego to negotiate with those fears. I'm actually being with them. I'm being with my fears. <laughs> and, you know, there's that's that's courage, in my opinion. Like we all really value and put people on pedestals that that pretend like they're not scared and they deny their fear and they hide behind their ego. They're great actors and actresses. But I think true courage comes when we let ourselves feel the fear and we are with the fear. We face the fear, we befriend the fear. And, and that's what I'm doing right now. And it's, it's very, very challenging because I have a part of me that is very traumatized and I have a part of me that is very courageous. And, and when I act from this courageous place, which is, I'm going to hire a vocal coach and I'm going to become a singer and this is going to be amazing. And I was in a place of courage when I did that. And then guess what? You know, I go back into traumatized Matt and then that is, I'm terrified. I'm terrified to get up and sing in front of people. I'm terrified of rejection. I'm terrified of failing in front of people. And this is, this is the predicament that I speak of. The human predicament is the dance between these two worlds. The soul makes choices and then the ego has to live with those. And then the ego makes choices and the soul has to live with those. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm having a hard time with is the duality. And, uh, and so anyways, this, this whole thing around trauma. Okay. Like I started seeing a, a psychologist and I've, I've seen her for, for, for 10 years almost. And, uh, but I started another bout of work with her. So we worked together for about a year and did a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of beautiful work. 
and thank you, Rita. I don't know if you'd ever watch one of my videos, but if you are, I love you and thank you so much for, for your support. Um, we did a, a ton of great work together and um, opened up a bunch of stuff, okay? And, and opened up enough stuff to, that I was able to be like, okay, I wanna do vocal coaching, let's do this. And then I started to notice that um, I had a lot of stuff trapped in my body. I had a lot of traumas that were still stuck in my body that needed to be worked on. And um, I, it's almost like I unearthed some, some stuff in my body and my nervous system was destabilized. It was like it, because what was stabilizing my nervous system was ego structure, right? Was isolating, be, keeping busy, like all of these things, external validation, all these things were keeping me away from my nervous system becoming destabilized. So I started working on these things. I started pulling them in. I don't wanna do these things anymore. And I met a completely dysregulated nervous system and it was greatly impacting my work. Um, it was impacting my ability to be public, um, to perform. And what was happening was I was having racing thoughts. I was having excessive amounts of depression. Like I, I didn't even want to get out of bed. And I was having suicidal ideation and it was happening pretty much daily. And yeah, it sucks. It sucks. I've had this happen many times in my life. I've had suicidal ideation many times and I've never actually had a plan. I've never actually acted upon it. So this is not a cry for help. <laughs> this is, it's not something I would ever act upon. I choose life and I will always choose life. That's, that's just who I am, <laughs> you know? Um, but the, the thought of being able to escape it all and fantasizing about that was like almost like enough to keep me going. Like it was like, if things got worse or whatever, I could do this if I needed to. That's what, where my mind was going. And I would fantasize about doing it and how it would just be easier to do that. And, and then I would just be reminded of the pain that this would cause people. And, you know, my clients would be completely abandoned and um, my family would be extremely hurt. And so anyway, I got into this really dark place and I decided, you know, for most of my life, I've been very anti-pharmaceutical and still am for the most part. I think it serves a purpose, but it's overused. And I've had judgments towards psychiatrists for most of my, my career and most of my life. And I decided I got so bad. It got so bad to the point where I... Um, the depression, the anxious thoughts, the intrusive thoughts. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't even read. I couldn't think straight. Like my mind was just completely all over the place. So I decided to, to go to my medical doctor and they said there's, cause I thought I had ADHD and the doctor said, sorry, like, honestly, like there's like one doctor I can refer you to. He's a medical doctor though. He's not a psychiatrist and whatever. So I decided to go the private route. So I found a psychiatrist out of the U S that I, I hired privately and did some consultation work with, and he did an assessment and it doesn't surprise me, but he diagnosed me with, with CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder which is a developmental trauma disorder basically. And um, it's like chronic PTSD caused by developmental trauma that occurs in, in life and, um, and anxiety disorder. And, you know, the thing, the thing is, is I take these, I take diagnoses like empathologies quite lightly, to be honest. And, um, because I think they're all characterized by something deeper. I think there's always spiritual aspects to these things. There's always tra trauma usually underpinning or, or informing a pathology or a diagnosis from my perspective. So, but there's validity to it as well, because I think I do have CPTSD. I think I've experienced a lot of trauma in my life, a lot of it being developmental attachment, interpersonal trauma. And um, I experienced a sexual trauma or a couple sexual traumas actually in my um, in my late teens, early twenties. And 
I had a lot of compounded stuff inside of my being and uh, I had to address it. I had to work on it. So anyways, I ended up getting on these supplements because I told him I'm not interested in pharmaceuticals and I wanted to do um, supplementation. So he's more of a holistic psychiatrist, which was fantastic. So I got on these these a couple of these products um, and for people I'll share them because people might be interested in them uh, the, the company's called brain MD and the one that I was started taking was called cal uh, calming brain brain support or brain calming support something like that and it's got like L-theanine and GABA and different things to help like calm the mind and calm the nervous system and then I, I was on this other one called serotonin mood support which has got like saffron extract and uh, 5-HTP so he said, well, let's start with, this, with the, the naturaceuticals first, and then we'll move into doing pharmaceuticals if we have to. And so I've been on them for a month now, and I'm feeling like my brain was going about a, like probably 100 kilometers an hour, and now it's probably going 65. Like, I'm, it's amazing in this video. Like, I'm like, you know, because I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to talk about, and it's amazing how I'm like mapping it. Like, it's like beautiful. And I never, I didn't realize like, how I was losing my goal thought constantly. So it would be like train tracks, you know, I'd, I'd have a thought and I would try to express it. And then another thought would come in and derail that thought. And then I would lose my train of thought. And this was happening constantly. And it was causing me a tremendous amount of anxiety. And this is why I haven't been creating a lot and performing and putting myself out publicly is because my brain was literally fried. Like it was like there was too much going on for me and you know, add being highly sensitive and having a sensitive nervous system on top of that, like fuck, it was it was too much. It was way too much. So I that's why I've been doing the bare minimum to get by. And you know, now that my brain is starting to kind of come back into, you know, somewhat manageable, like I'm able to to create and um <clears throat> and share with a lot less uh anxiety. So um so anyway so what i've been focusing on now is how to just be more in my power like how can i continue to be authentic and continue to just let go of who i'm not and who i'm not is is perfectionist matt um has to have everything perfect before he brings himself forward and that's why I want to get to get back into these old style of videos because they are more me. Uh, I teach from the heart. And when I'm too prepared and perfectionistic, I teach from the mind. And they're both beautiful. And I think they both have a place. But I want to be a heart-centered teacher, creator. Um, I want to be able to share from the most authentic place within me. And I think that's what this is about. And... Um, so I want to share a little bit about, and I promise I will get to, I'm going to share seven, um, seven powerful tips on how to navigate the darkness and what I've been doing, but I want to continue to share my story because I think there's, there's you know, wisdom in, in sharing story. And I think story is so powerful. And, um, you know, I know whoever, if you're, if you've made it, this is what 30 minutes in, if you've made it this far, I know you're, you're my people, <laughs> you know, cause you know, people that just watch the first five minutes and they're like, oh, this guy's talking just about his story and they exit out. Like those aren't my people because, uh, my, my tribe, my community are people that are still watching this video right now. So thank you. I love you. And I appreciate you taking the time to hear me, to hear, hear, to hear my heart. You know, that's, that's really what I'm sharing here. Um, so the singing <laughs> oh god the singing um i love singing okay i absolutely love singing i'm always singing like and like my poor neighbors it's so hilarious like i met my neighbor for the first time uh, who lives below me and my building is like older so you can hear everything and he's like oh my god he's like you're the guy that's always singing and he's like you have a beautiful voice and i was like that's so sweet thank you and um but so anyways the what the singing is bringing up for me is tremendous. Like I never thought in my wildest dreams that starting to sing and hiring a vocal coach would bring up so much stuff for me. And a lot of it is around perfectionism. A lot of it is around being seen. Um, a lot of it is around being seen failing because I miss notes all the time. I'm off pitch and my vocal coach is very expressive. So she shows me in her face that I've missed a note. And it, it, you know, at first it was bringing up all sorts of stuff. So I'm eight months in now. So I'm able to sing in front of her pretty much fully let go. But I've only had one performance in this time. And I have my second performance in a week from now. 
on May 18th. And uh, I'm terrified. <laughs> Again, I'm terrified. But I'm going to do it. And I know it's probably going to be like 10% less scary than the first time. And I'm just going to continue to show up and continue to do this. But it's the, the one of the main things that it's highlighted for me is how terrible I am at, at receiving support. And the, 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 this will be the first time that I have people coming. Uh, the first one I did, I had one person come. And it was actually the girl that I came out to. I, I came out to her when, uh, that I was gay when I was 18. And there was just something about her. Just we have a kinship that she, I feel like I can be fully myself and she can see me. And, and I don't know, there's just something. So I invited her. But this time I invited my best friend. I invited my mom, my sister. And like this will be the first time I'm ever singing in front of my family. And, uh, you know, I'm letting them come and support me. And it feels so scary. It feels so scary to just let people support me. And, and you know, I know that this comes from my traumatized self that has like, I'm going to do it all on my own because my attachment trauma told me people aren't safe and I have to do everything on my own. So I've been very, very hyper independent most of my life. And, you know, I'm usually the one that helps people. So I don't need support. Um, this is This is not true. I'm a very tender, sensitive man and I need support. I need love. I need intimacy. I need all the things. I'm no different than anybody else. I just may, might have like a, uh, I have it all together exterior, but really I do need people. And uh, this realization has been very humbling and, and you know, I've been trying my best to open my heart to let people be there for me. And it's bringing up a lot of discomfort. It's bringing up a lot of grief, a lot of sadness, a lot of um, joy, you know, so um, then I wrote a quote when I had this feeling that my first uh, open mic that I, um, you know, let yourself be vulnerable for only then can you be truly held. And oh, it makes me emotional because I haven't, I haven't let myself be held most of my life. And, you know, I'm at this place where I'm just craving that so badly. Like, I just want to be held. You know, I want to really be held. And I want to be able just to surrender and just let go and let somebody hold me, you know? And that's intimacy for me. That's that's intimacy. That's vulnerable for me. That's authentic for me. That's all the things, you know? And I've been denying myself this for my whole life. And it's like, no wonder I haven't healed my trauma. <laughs> You know, at least to the point where I, I feel safe, like I've done a lot of great work on myself, but I, I think I'm finally just getting to the to the, the, the deepest, deepest roots of this it, are, are, are healing now and they're healing because I'm opening my heart and letting people in. Right. Like tr you look at trauma and shame and I've been doing this work a long time and I know what heals it. It's connection. Right. It's being held. It's being emotionally attuned to and validated. And this is what I'm craving, you know what I mean? So, and this is why I haven't attracted my partner. I know that my soulmate is out there. And yes, I'm a believer in soulmates and I believe he's out there. And he's, he's probably, I have a feeling intuitively he's done his work or he's doing a lot of his work and he's ready and he's waiting for me because <laughs> I'm learning how to open my heart. And, uh, but anyway, so I want to just, I made a, a couple notes here. I want to make sure I touched on everything. Um, yeah, it seems I did, which is great. I didn't even look at it at all and I got it. So, okay, so seven things. And now I'm going to go into teacher, teacher Matt. Um, so the seven potent things that I have learned um, to move through my dark times in my life and hopefully they'll help you, okay? And I would say, like, I'm still in the middle of this all. And I had a lot of hesitance to create this video because I you, I have this core belief around perfectionism that don't, sh don't show up unless you're good. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm still struggling. Like, I, I'm still having dark thoughts. I'm still having depression. I'm still having all the things. So to create this video today, it's like, yeah, it feels good. I feel good. I'm like, I'm almost like exposing my ego and the part of myself that's like, don't do this. Well, no, sorry. I'm, I'm not wanting to live from that part of myself anymore. So here I am. <clears throat> okay, point number one. Presence is key. Presence is key. So when we're in this state, when I'm in this state of feeling extremely... Oh, just heavy. 
what happens is the mind or the ego wants to insert itself and it wants to it wants to create preference and it wants to judge the experience okay when we're in presence we are not in mind we're not in ego we're embodied right mind and ego can't happen in presence they just don't they grab on to past and they grab on to future that's what they do um, so when we're in that we'll either when we're in ego or mind we'll grab onto the past and we'll think about a time when we were feeling better and we'll pr pr bring it into the future and say why can't i be here still or we'll, we'll hyper fixate on the past and all the horrible things that happened to us and we can't fully become present because of that so we want to obviously honor both experiences because we can't just say i want to be present and we're just going to be present it doesn't work like that we are always negotiating between the dualities right the soul and the ego the soul being more present energy the ego being more past and future energy we're always going to be dancing between these worlds but when you can offer yourself presence offer yourself presence and presence happens when we slow ourselves down okay so slow down that is the key to presence if we're busy 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 and we're traumatized and busy 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 we need to slow down we need to connect to our body and then what we'll meet is we'll meet presence and presence is the refuge from the suffering when i'm in the present moment i am not suffering it's the most miraculous thing so i wake up in the morning i feel heaviness in my body i judge it i'm like i don't want to feel this and i perpetuate the pain then i catch myself in the shower literally 15 minutes later singing and dancing because i'm in the present moment and then I remember, oh yeah, I'm heavy and I'm suffering. And then I go back into that. So presence really is the refuge. So when, you know, when you're not judging your experience, you're in the present moment. So try your best to be present. <clears throat> and if you want to know how to do that, check out my book, which is Be the Space. <laughs> um, and I wrote that from my, my second dark night. This is my third one. My second dark night is where I wrote that book from. Um, so, okay. The next one is only do what you absolutely need to do and give yourself space to be whatever you're feeling. So <clears throat> my perfectionist mind, like I literally haven't been able to do work. Like I've been able to work with my clients. And by the way, I'm doing amazing work with my clients because my, I am present with my clients, first of all, and the presence all alleviates that. So I don't suffer with my clients. It's amazing. And because I'm, I'm so raw, I, am like I'm right there with my clients I'm so sensitive right now and I can pick up on everything that's going on for them so I've probably been pra I've been practicing some of my best work in the last six months than I have in my whole life right so and if you're a client of mine you might attest to that um, it's been pretty pretty great so um, but other than that I've been only doing what I absolutely need to do and I my perfectionist mind and my ego is really judging this experience because I want to be creating. I want inspiration and I only create from inspiration and motivation. I don't just create because I have to create. I'm not that kind of creator. I'm not going to just create because my my audience needs content to digest. Like I will not, I will never be that, right? Um, I will create when I'm inspired to create. And if I'm not inspired to create, I'm living, I'm healing, I'm growing, I'm doing me. Right. And that's a skill I've had to learn because there's a lot of content creators out there that are creating from busyness and they're creating from that mental hyper masculine energy. And I don't want to create from that place. Most of my work is created from my feminine, from my slowed down kind of really um, soul centered self. Right. Um, so, yes, give yourself space. And constantly on this journey, I've been asking myself, how can I be more gentle with myself right now? Because the that hyper busy Matt wants to come in and be like, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing more. And I'm like, I want to be under my covers and I want to be napping. So I'm going to go nap. That's what I'm going to do. And I've been choosing me. And I've been choosing to slow down. That's so, so important. So that's number two. Number three, let people in to support you. Ugh, this one's hard for me. So that's what I've been doing. I've been letting people in to support me. So telling my family about my open mic was me letting people in to support me. Um, reaching out to my best friend and having, we, we sat around the, a bonfire the other night and just talked about life and stuff and she's there to support me. And you know, it's just those sorts of things. So letting people in is so key. And you know, I think the old Matt would have let people into my suffering after I had completed it, right? I would have created this video in two months from now when my when my healing is complete, and I would have 
talked about it retrospectively. And now I'm like, here I am. Like I'm, I'm, I'm suffering right now. <laughs> you know, like I woke up this morning really heavy and here I am. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the key. Um, talk about it. Um, and again, like I said, pretending you're not scared isn't courage. So talk about it. Talk about it while you're experiencing it. Don't wait till you're feeling better to talk about it, right? Talk about it now. Tell people what you're going through. And I know this video will probably help a lot of people because a lot of people are struggling right now and like tremendously. Like if people could see what I see in this world, you would be like, this world is suffering. This world, this planet is suffering. The people that inhabit this planet are suffering. Like there's a great amount of grief happening on this planet right now and people need support. So when, if people, if you're watching this and you're like, man, like I feel so glad that, you know, like I'm not alone in my suffering. You're never alone in your suffering. Like I, I promise you that you are never alone in your suffering. And yeah, so just keep sharing, keep being vulnerable and sharing with people what you're navigating and destigmatize the fact that it's not okay to whatever be emotional or to talk about what's going on for you to be struggling and especially if you're a practitioner like me and you're struggling like share it share it with your clients share it with your people like you know it's it's amazing what can happen um it restores humanity and and humility and it allows us all to feel connected um okay number five is surrender oof surrender i'm learning about surrender in such a big way right now you know it's funny if you were to ask me five years ago like have you surrendered or do you know about surrender i'd been like oh yeah like i'm a master at it <laughs> surprise that's the ego talking the the surrender is is a constant muscle that we're we're, we're, we're using and developing it's not something that we just do it's not a, it's not one action it's several actions it's it's momentary decisions we make every single day to let go of control and to get out of our own way. And, you know, the, the, the key to surrender, in my opinion, is to, is to have discernment. To have discernment when to act and when to rest. That's, that's surrender because we can over surrender, in my opinion. We can become collapsed especially with depression i've been noticing like my depression wants me to collapse constantly and that's you have to surrender to that but there's also a period of having to take action too so surrender for me is that it's like knowing when to let go and when to grab on you know when to push when to pull like that's 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 key for me and uh and surrendering to the darkness <clears throat> You know, the more I push the darkness away, the more dark, the darker it becomes. So surrender to it, breathe into it, move towards it, befriend it, talk to it, ask it what it's trying to communicate to you. You know, it's amazing. I think, where is that? Right here. I have a quote that says, transformation happens on the other side of surrender. Boy, am I learning that right now. So yeah, it's a magical quote. Um, okay, number six is grieve and release. Grief is, is the, that's what it is. The dark night of the soul is grief. It is moving through heavy amounts of grief and fear. And when we subside and let the fear, just we just with the fear, we grieve. And what we're grieving is all the things we fear. <laughs> what we fear becoming, what we fear not becoming, right? We're letting go of all that. And that is super painful because, you know, right now I feel like I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm going through a pattern called letting go of, or, or freedom from the known. And it's so true. Freedom from the known, like knowing who I am, knowing who I'm attaching to, what I'm grabbing onto. I've had to grieve all that, but you know, what's left me, I'm left the soul, the energy of who I am. That's what's left. Not all these stories, not all this concept of who I think I am. I'm left with me. And that's amazing, right? So the more I grieve, the less I have attachment to the duality, right? To the stories of who I am. I'm more just the embodiment of who I am. Like, and so that's, that's what grief and, and uh, releasing attachments, that's what that will lead to. So allow, allow that to happen. And you can only, you can only grieve when you feel. 
right? So you got to connect in, take some time to be with your feelings um, and slow down. Like I can't emphasize that enough. Like if you were to take away one thing out of this video, it's slow down, like that's key. And if you have a hard time slowing down, slow down by 10%, right? Chew a little slower, walk a little slower, talk a little slower, just try to slow down a hair. And what you'll meet is you'll meet more of, of you in your bodied, your embodied you. <clears throat> and that's where a lot of the healing will happen. Okay, last point. <clears throat> Make meaning of your suffering. Make meaning of your suffering. This is everything. This is everything. I, I would not be here and if I didn't make meaning of my suffering. I probably honestly would have ended my life because it was too painful what I have been, had endured in this life. And I kept making meaning of it. What, why am I going through this, right? Well, I'm here on this planet. I am a light worker and I am here to elevate consciousness of the planet. How can I elevate consciousness of the planet if I'm not elevating my own consciousness? So I keep reminding myself that all the work I'm doing is serving humanity, right? And when I, when I realize that, I get out of my own way. I get out of the, the me energy and I flip it to the we energy. I'm here to serve. I'm literally a spiritual servant, right? That is my work. And that's what my soul chose to come into this life as. My ego fucking hates it but my soul it loves it and it's like so soul nourishing when I connect to that energy. So I have to go through this. It's like my, it's like my initiation or my rite of passage into being a spiritual warrior is to do this work. So as I make meaning of the suffering I endure, I literally connect to my way out, right? And I'm like, and it gives me hope and it gives me resilience and endurance and strength so look for the meaning and why you're going through what you're going through. And some, some things you might not find meaning. If you've just lost someone that you love tremendously, it's hard to find meaning in that. I get that. So you got to be with the grief. You got to, you got to move through that. But if you can look for the silver lining or the bigger picture of why you're going through what you're going through, it will take that energy of why me? Why am I going through this again? Why do I got to go through another dark night of the soul? Like that's the victim energy in me. That's my ego. My ego fucking hates it. And it doesn't want to go through this anymore. It wants to finally find peace. And I, you know, and even in this moment, I, 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 I recognize it in me. Like, when is this going to end? When am I finally going to get to live life like a normal person and not constantly have to go through cycles of, of suffering? Um, but maybe that'll, maybe it'll never end. Maybe this, maybe what, how it will end is I will stop judging my suffering as suffering and it will just become my path. You know what I mean? And I will, I won't be attaching to it should be this way. What if I were just to embrace it in this moment and, and stop putting up resistance to things as they are and I were just to accept them as they are? Is that what alleviates the suffering? Right? It's, it's something to think about. So... Yeah, make meaning of your suffering. I think it's uh, it's a tremendous tool. And yeah, that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I know this was a longer video, but if you made it to the end, thank you for tuning in and hearing my story. And I look forward to continuing to move through this and continuing to create. Um, I think this is a big step for me and I'm hoping that it kind of opens the floodgates because man, even though I've been going through what I've been going through and suffering quite a bit, I have, I haven't, and this, this mechanism is always alive in me because what I'm going through things, I'm always thinking about how can I teach this? So I have like endless amounts of content ideas. Like it's insane. Like I've got probably like a thousand at least, like I'm not kidding, like so many files in my phone of different pieces of content I want to create. So I'm not, I'm not lacking ideas. I'm lacking inspiration to share my ideas. And that's, I know that will come full circle. So I'm looking forward to, um, creating another batch of grandma's cookies. And for those of you who, who get that inside joke, I, I wrote that about that on my, uh, on my newsletter. So if you're not on my newsletter, go to my website, mattlancetal.com and get on my newsletter. Cause I, I send out a lot of stuff in my newsletter that I don't put anywhere else. So, um, okay. I'm going to end this now. Much love to everybody. And, uh, yeah, I hope you're having a beautiful day.